these characters not only have conscious that they've low but the conscious also have names mm -hmm. it's just like when we are we are very we have great affection for something and when we have a dogs as pets then we in name the dogs sometimes uh, in traditional traditional cultures you now if people had bullock carts they would not only name the bullocks but they also make the they, they name the carts so like that the conches are also named and the indication is that this is something which is very real you know that that these are characters who are present at a particular time in history they had a particular way of functioning not only were they blowing conches but their conches had names so the whole the whole point is that it's, the gita starts with very vivid details and we move forward so the characters are being introduced now so if we consider the narrative focus or the narrative lens it was on krishna arjuna but now it is moving to another formidable warrior that is bhima so he is right next to them and it's mentioned that he blows the conch also bhima is known for his physical prowess and that is indicated that he was extremely powerful and there is a little light hearted tone over here like i said different people are referred to by different name so bhima karma brukodara so brukodara is a voracious eater so we say what why talk about eating in the middle of a war so it can seem a little funny but the idea is that a person who is a voracious eater but not a, he was not lazy he was massively built and, yeah. and it's like somebody we some metaphorical say that person is a heavyweight so that comes from the boxing or a wrestling thing that a heavyweight person is difficult to fight with so it's a playful way of saying that he was the heavyweight that literally he was huge in form and he would eat a lot but he was a vigorous powerful warrior so that's indicated he is also blowing his conch the official commander is another person named vishtadyumna so the idea was that sometimes in a team so there might be the most talented say in a team sports there might be somebody might be like in cricket there might be the most talented batsman but maybe we may want that batsman to just be free to bat you know you don't have to worry about the strategy of the team and everything like that so bhima and arjuna were clearly the most formidable warriors but they wanted the strategy was let them focus on fighting so drishtadyumna had been he was not as great a warrior but he had been appointed as the commander there he will mentions later it's interesting that while these lists of names are mentioned that they are all being mentioned not necessarily in the particular hierarchy but yudhishthir is mentioned he is the the oldest among the pandava brothers and he is is the king or he will be the king once he is wins the kingdom and then there are multiple generations over here and this generational vision will be talked about so drupada for example is from one generation above the pandavas drupada is the father of drishtadyumna who is the commander and he is in some ways in the same generation as the pandavas so in fact they are related drupada is their father in law of the pandavas that generation is mentioned and then from the next generation the sons are their sons are also mentioned and one of them is 
the mighty armed son of Draupadi, that is Abhimanyu is mentioned. Sorry, my dear, the, uh, so now this is, he is the son of the Pandavas. So this indicates that there are multiple generations over there and all of them are fighting this war. And they are all fighting. And it's interesting that uh, an epithet, a glorificatory epithet is used for this last person who is the youngest. He's just barely 16 at this time. And he's mentioned he when he is mighty arm. So again, from the point of view of the narrator, the, the power of the Pandavas is being indicated. And that will be highlighted even more in the next text. So again, morale. If you see in the, the Pandavas and the Kauravas, the Kauravas, their conscious, when they're blown, it was saying that the sound was tumultuous. Hmm? And that indicates that, yeah, they were confident, they were ready for war. But here, the description of the Pandavas conscious is described not just tumultuous, it's not just loud, it's saying it's, it's spread across the earth and the sky. It's much more than tumultuous. It is spread everywhere in terms of uh, its, its volume, you could say. So the volume is indicated. So this indicates that the volume itself is greater. But then along with that, there's something else that is talked about is the impact. The impact is far greater. There's no description that the blowing of the conches by the Kauravas had any impact. The only uh, su subsequent event was that the Pandavas also blew the conches. But here the impact is described to be that sh their hearts were shattered. So it's a, it's a very strong phrase to say the heart shattered. That means that in the, if you say the mind games are going on, in the mind games, Duryodhana did all those things. But the Pandavas were so confident that all his attempts to raise the morale of his troops seems to have just gone in vain. That, that was the impact. So it seems to indicate that Duryodhana's mind games have failed. Or at least they didn't have any meaningfully long impact. Because the sheer spirit and morale of the Pandavas was so much greater. That's what indicates. So here, the run in, in sports, often there's a run of the play. That phrase is used. That means say one team is playing in such a way that they are they're having the upper hand. They're winning. So overall, if you look at the narrative, this the Pandavas narration starts from the, the actual action on the battle from the blowing of the conscious. It goes from 12 to 9. And in this narration, it clearly seems that the Pandavas are above the Kauravas. So the run of the play is going in a particular direction. And then in the next text, suddenly something different is going to happen. So you could see the camera spread across the Pandavas and now it has come back to Krishna and Arjuna and Arjuna speaks. So Arjuna's bow is upraised, which indicates that he's ready to fight. He's, uh, he's already blown his conch. So now is the time for action. It's not the time for words now. But so what is he going to speak? So that's what we see in the next verses. That it's going in a particular way, but it starts going in another way now. Mm -hmm. 
it's now it's a very unusual request that they are right here on a chariot and he's telling take the chariot in between and why do i want to do that i want to see who's there on the opposite side okay what's the point of seeing them so this is a question that is intriguing at many levels at one level you know why not why no action right now what the why do you want to see now and then second is also that you know what's there to see because these negotiations to form alliances had been going on for a long time before the war and therefore they knew who was on which side so it's not that suddenly there's going to be some new person on the opposite side that he wanted to see so he says i want to see those who are supporting the evil minded son so he's conscious that those are evil people and those who are supporting the evil they may themselves be evil but they're definitely on that side so he's conscious of that but here he's asking i want to see what's there to see that's the question like he's even acknowledging that they are evil minded mm. so there are no new people over there but here slowly what is being indicated is that arjuna he is having some surprising thought now at this stage just surprising but what is the exact thought that is not clear and that will become clear soon but here at this point things seem to be taking an unexpected twist so often in movies or in novels what keeps people reading is these plot twists and turns that when things are expected to go in a particular way and suddenly they go in the opposite way when expectations are then what is anticipated what is expected that doesn't happen when they are defied that can be annoying but that can also be intriguing hey i didn't i didn't see that coming where is that coming from so practically nobody could have seen that coming but this in, uh, that's why i said it seems like that it seems at this stage that the place had an effect on arjuna and he starts thinking hey what are we really doing over here i want to see that Now that we I'll elaborate in the next when you come to the next verses, I'm going to start speaking. But that the that's what I was saying. That's going against the run of the play. They have come in the middle. So. they come in the middle krishna uh, krishna is here arjuna is here and then in this chapter there's only one time that krishna speaks and that's not even a verse uh, so that maybe we can just read that out as in the next verse it's almost the one fourth or one half of a verse which krishna speaks so now there are many people who could be who there were on the opposite side but the two that mattered the most for arjuna are bhishma and drona now the sanskrit word is bhishma drona pramukta prominent among prominent were bhishma and drona now this could mean that they were prom the prominence was in the mind which is of course there duryodhana uh, arjuna was very concerned about them 
and it caused no small angst to him that he had to fight against them but it could also be in sight that can also mean that krishna he brought the chariot in the middle of the two armies but in the middle he could have brought it in front of many warriors but he brought it in the middle where bhishma and drona could be seen and now this vision krishna the only word that krishna speaks behold see partha pashya see see the kauravas assembled over here so now this vision will have a significantly be uh, disorienting influence on arjuna and that we will discuss in our next session so we discussed a good number of texts today i think from 15 to 25 we discussed so broadly the first theme we discussed is the overall how the omens are omens or indications are positive for the pandavas and there's also the indication that their entire multiple generations had come to fight then the part of that omens being positive was that their conscious led to the morale of the kauravas going down their morale it's not so much that their morale is up that indicate more indi indirectly through the morale of the opposite party going down then after that in the next part we discussed how uh, there is arjuna's counter intuitive request that oh what's going on over here he wants to see so why this is not the time to see and what is there to see both those questions come up but this is a subtle indicator that there is something more going on over here this could be the influence of the place of dharma hmm that we just hinted at it and then the last part is that krishna brings him to the most if you want to see it is the, the most provocative vision for him that is the people is most concerned about bhishma and drona they are who are prominent in that vision and he will see those and he will be significantly disoriented by that now how that happens let's discuss in the next session